Right, so in the previous lecture, we discussed demand. So now we are going to move to other side of the market. Remember, we are talking about competitive market, meaning there are many buyers, and then at the same time, we have many sellers, right? So we have just look at buyer's behavior. Now we are going to look at seller's behavior, right? Or we look at the supply side. So most of the discussion will be similar because this is just like an image of what happens in the demand side. So for example, so there is a demand curve and there's a we have supply curve. So there's a quantity demand, then there's a quantity supply. Day. There's a shift in demand, then there's a shift in supply. Okay. The difference is so we just look at other side of the market, and then so the factor that causes a change in supply is gonna differ from change in demand. All right. So supply represent a behavior of sellers. Supply curve shows the quantity supplied it at various price. So that just means, okay, so we just take the price of the given. Okay, so we are going to look at how the market is going to respond to different price in supply side, right? And again, so quantity supply day. So like quantity demand day. So this given the price, so how producers willing to and able to, right? So not only they are willing to, and also it requires they are able to, right? Just think about given the technology. It states are willing to provide their model three at 30,000, they cannot, right? So they're not going to make enough profit. Is iPhones willing to sell their incoming iPhone 13 at $500? They, they can, but they're not willing to do that because they, they won't make enough profit to cover all the expense, right? So that's just an example. So they're willing to and able to sell at a particular price. Price is given, okay? And we must wait until we finish the supply and demand all together, and then we are gonna see so how the price is gonna determine, right? Now, we are gonna look at the supply schedule, okay? So this is for cotton again, so you can switch these to whatever goes you like. Okay. So at a different price, this this column, you're gonna see the quantity supplied is gonna change accordingly. Now instead of decrease with the price, now you're gonna see an increase in price. Because now we are looking at other side of market. Higher the price, the more profit I'm going to make by selling the good or by supply the good, right? So you're gonna see a curve like here. So it is very similar to demand. So we just put those dots on this diagram, right? And then so we connect those dots, we are gonna get our supply curve. Now instead of a decline downward slope, now we have upward slope. So this is upward slope, which means what? So the higher the price, the higher the quantity supplied it. Okay. Higher the price, the producer more willing to and able to provide, right? Okay, so this is supply. Now, similar like in demand, so we need to differentiate between change in quantity supplied it and the change in supply, right? But first look at what mean is a change in supply. Okay, so this just means the entire curve shift. Right? So the curve shift to the right. Look here, shift to the right. So this means there's an increase in supply. Remember earlier we talked about shift in demand. If the demand curve shifts to the right, it also means increase in demand. Right? So here, so the right hand side shift of the supply curve means an increase in supply. And we should come up with a similar explanation as we have come up for demand, right? So how we understand that? Given the price of $1.25, and you can see the quantity supply date will increase from 13 to, sorry, from 11 to 13, right? 
So the supply increase is one way to understand. The other way to understand is, so if we want the quantity fixed at 11, so the price will decline, meaning so the supplier, the producer, they are more willing to supply, right? So they're willing to supply is measured by the price. Now they are willing to supply at 0 0.75 cents, right? Okay, so if we look at a move along the curve, so this is caused by change in price. Okay, that's the only change, only reason. So the price change, price of the goods. Okay, so change in the price of the goods is gonna cause you move along the curve. But then the shift of the curve is caused by other factors. So that's what we will discuss today, All right? Okay, so reinforce what we just learned. Shift of the supply curve. Shift to the right is increase. Shift to the left is a decrease. Now let's use decrease as a chance to reinforce what we learned, right? So how we understand that? Fix the price. The quantity supplied will decrease. Fix the quantity. the price must increase substantially. So that just means, so the willingness to supply has dropped. So hence, the curve shift to the left is a decrease in supply, all right? So trying to think about how you can picture this in your mind, because we will frequently use this supply and the demand curve in our future research, uh, future study. Not only in the review for micro, we will also see a most identical graph in macro analysis, all right? So, because the, the fundamental idea is the same. Okay. So now here, there are five factors can cause a shift of the supply. So this is very similar to those factors that cause a shift in demand. But they're, they're, the way they work is slightly different. Now let's go one by one, as we did before. Okay, start with input price. A decrease in the price of input will increase profit. How do you understand that? Okay, just say for example, the battery becomes cheaper to make. And then the profit from producing the EV car, whether we talk about Tesla, or we talk about Nissan's Leaf, or we talk about uh, the um, Chevy's boat, or whatever car you're thinking about. So it's gonna become cheaper, right? Currently, so the EV car, why is expensive? Largely because the battery is expensive to make, right? So over time, so if the, if the battery becomes cheaper to make, and then so the EVs becomes more and more popular, or why they adopt it? by the society, right? So this is the idea, so how a decrease in the price of input will encourage more supply because it's cheaper to make, more profit to make, right? On the other hand, if the input cost increases and then the supply will decrease. Like say, for example, in 1970, because of the oil embargo, the oil price skyrocketed. That caused the supply of many things decline in 1970. Actually, it also caused a big recession. Okay, so in the future chapter, so when we talk about macroeconomics, we will see that example again. Now to understand the input price and the supply, let's look at this example. Okay. What happens to the number of new businesses if the government reduced the fee and red tape associated with new business licenses. To understand these questions, or to answer these questions, we need to identify which market we are talking about. 
here so we talk about a market of new businesses right so the supply of new businesses is what is measured by the number of new business incorporated to incorporate a new business so one of the input is the fee right so you need to pay the fee you need to pay those people works right or you need to file those people works so if the government decides to reduce the fee and reduce the red tapes so that's going to reduce the input cost okay and then so naturally so that's going to encourage supply or as a response the supply will increase right okay all right other example so when the price of cotton drops and then the supply of blue jeans will increase why because cotton for the current technology and the current trend current test of the of the society is a main input of blue jeans right and i read from the news so they have some alternative to make blue jeans maybe eventually so there's a change in test a change in preference so we switch to other ingredients but for now so cotton is the main input so the cotton price is going to affect blue jeans the supply of blue jeans right okay now we look at second factor can cause change in supply right so this is the price of related goods but then similar to demand so we need to understand the nature of those related goods right and we, here we also have substitutes and complements but here so the substitute or complement or substitutability complementarity is in terms of production not in terms of consumption just to remind you what is the substitutability in consumption coke and pepsi so both are beverage both are sugar right and but then the substitutability in production is what so you can produce a versus b okay so we live in nebraska given the climate so the farmland we can either grow corn or we can use to grow soybean right in nebraska so in terms of production or in terms of farmland or in terms of farming so corn probably is not a good substitute for cotton right why because because pretty much nobody grow cotton in nebraska yes you can but you won't make a profit right so so that just that just how we understand substitutes so this is in terms of production right and then what's complement again so in in the demand complement is what so we consume two goods together like the uh, pen i use to draw on my tablet is a complement to my tablet it's attached to my tablet right the adapter to charge my laptop is a complement to the laptop you need to consume them all together but what is complementarity in production process this just says if we produce a and usually naturally we produce b okay? let's think about so if we produce or process in pork and usually or naturally we produce some lard out of the fat right and if we raise cows and usually so there's like a manures right manure so i mean depending on who you ask so it has tremendous amount of commercial value right so this is naturally you produce okay so this is what we mean complementarity but then so the price of a substitutable goods change that's going to have impact on the supply 
but the invariant supply is different from what happens in demand. Okay, I'll just give you an example. Okay, so if the corn price increase, how would that affect the supply of soybean? So to understand that, so we need to to understand first price of corn, let's say PC, increase. And then, so this is going to lead to supply of corn increase. But now if we increase the supply of, uh, of corn, means we have less land to produce soybean, right? So that means the soybean is soybean s is okay so this stand for supply for soybean so they will decrease right because you run out of resource your resource will go to some something more profitable right so this is substitutability now if we look at the complementarity so if the price of pork, let's call it PP, pork, increase. And then, then, so the supply of pork is going to increase. And then, then the supply of lard, what will happen? It's going to automatically increase because we are slaughtering more pigs. And so we are going to generate a larger amount of fat. And then we are going to produce more lard out of those fat. Right? So this everything is just automatically. Right? Because they are complement. So you produce A, you must produce B. But what substitute? You grow A and then you cannot you cannot grow B. You produce A and then you cannot produce B. Right? So again, the the best way to understand or to remember those concepts is through examples. Okay? So basically you need to find out four examples. Substitute goods in demand, think about Coke and Pepsi. Complement in demand, think about your left hand side shoes versus right hand side shoes. Substitute in production, think about in Nebraska, corn versus soybean. Actually, that's most of farmers do, right? So they alternate. And I learned from my previous students. So the, the main reason why they alternate is that's the most efficient, efficient way to kill the, uh, the, the, the pest, right? Okay, and then so complements in terms of production, just think about pork versus lard. All right, so those are four examples that help us understand the concept of substitute or substitutability and then complements or complementarity in demand and the supply. So that's the best way. So if we understand those four examples, <clears throat> and then so you should have no problem to understand how the price of A affects the demand for B. So either this is a substitute or complement. And the same logic goes to supply. Okay. Now the next factor, take knowledge. Right? So basically, so if we have new tech, new and better technology, think about in farming sector, or in think about modern economy, we have computer. Right? So better technology will make seller willing to offer more at a given price, and sell their quantity at lower price, or in general, so better technology. Let's use T. Leads to higher supply, right? Or, in other words, mass production with better technology. Think about 100 years ago, the uh, introduction of vehicle or the electric electricity. And in the 1780s, the introduction of personal computer. Or in 2000, late 2000, the introduction of smartphone. Right, so this new technology just change our life fundamentally and increase the supply of certain things in a dramatic way. Right? So it's because of new technology. Right? 
So yeah, by the way, so summarize a technological innovation. Lower cost, increased supply. Right? There are plenty of examples in our history. Again, think about start with electricity. And think about personal computer. And think about internet. So those are big and the fundamental technological innovation. What's going to be the next one? That's everyone's guess. All right. Next one, expectation. Okay. So this expectation includes the income and other things. So here, so I'm going to focus on price. As you're going to see, so the impact is going to be different from demand. Okay. Now, let's say, for example, if the producer expecting the price is going to rise in the future, okay, think about the housing market. Okay. If we are expecting the house is getting more and more expensive down the road, so when we talk about demand, so that's going to increase demand today, right? Because you want to get hold of a house before it becomes too expensive or becomes unaffordable. Now the rise in housing price in the future is going to have opposite impact on supply. So these realtors or those builders, what they're going to do? So they will hold on their house, right? So they was hoping so I can sell a better price in the future. So actually you can see there's a tension, right? So actually this is going to exacerbate the housing market. All right, but again, so let's just wait for uh, next section. So we have supply and demand all together to understand the dynamics. But for now, make sure you understand how the expectation on price affect supply and demand. All right. By the way, on the other hand, if the producer expecting the price to decline, usually this happens because of seasonal change or because technology advancement, right? Seasonal change, for example, Christmas. Okay? So all the demand over Christmas goes will die out after January, right? And the price will decline. And then, so the producer, what they're gonna do if they're expecting the price is gonna decline in the near future. So they'll increase the supply to try to get rid of their inventory, right? The other example, uh, if they're expecting so the cell phones become cheaper because of new technology or becomes competition. What they can do? Again, they're gonna increase supply to benefit from current price, to maximize their profit, to get rid of their inventory. Right? So this is how the expectation on price will affect the supply. Right? And then your expectation on some policy, particularly from the government, also affects supply, but largely through uh, through profitability, right? Like like in this example, okay? if producers they expect they expect, so the few, the government is going to support uh, clean energy, like this background picture shows. And then so in the future, demand will increase. And then what they're going to do? So they're going to increase their supply, right? Because they know so by producing or supplying more uh, wind turbines or solar panels, so I'm going to I'm to capture larger market share. And this market become larger and larger because people are aware of this climate change and the government is providing more and more support to clean and green energy, right? So this is, a, again, this is another example of expectation. All right. 
So the last factor is going to be the numbers of producer. Right, so this is similar to numbers of buyers. Now the numbers of producer, so they will affect the supply. Right? The, the number of producer change largely because of entry and exit. Okay, what is entry? Entry implies more sellers enter the market. Right? Just think about what happens right after iPhone Sorry, Apple introduced the first iPhone. And then so suddenly you have Samsung, you have LG, and then many other brands. Right? So there's entry. And then immediately, so the supply of smartphone explode. Right? And then on the other hand, so we have exit. And then we also have an example of exit. Right? So think about social media you use. Today so you use Snapchat, you use Instagram, you use, I don't know, so many, many other things like Facebook, right? But then throughout first 10 or 20 years of uh, 21st century, so there are many firms or many uh, internet companies, so they leave the market. Just name a few. So you may heard about the uh, MySpace and AOL, which is American Online. And then so earlier, so there's a, uh, a uh, company making music, like older version of um, Spotify is called, I forgot, Net is no, I forgot. Anyway, so Napster or something. So back in early 2000, so there's like an earlier, older version of uh, Spotify. Okay, but so uh, they have different business model. So the company just uh, 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 was driven out of the market. Just give you an example, right? So, and then the entry and exit is going to change the number of uh, supply, and then it's going to change the supply. Right? Oh, final example. So these days, so pretty much everyone listening to music while streaming, right? And but then historically, so we have these um, these uh, LD, like a big one. So oh, by the way, so these things becomes popular again, right? And then so we have CD. And then we have this uh, many other form, right? But anyway, so right now, so primary way you listen to music is via streaming. So you can see there's an entry and exit. Right? Okay, to finish this supply, and so we again, so we are going to convert individual supply to market supply. We look at each individuals. Here we look at two individuals. So these two is going to use to represent many. This is a simplification. Okay. And then, so we add them together. So we are going to get market supply. Right? And here, again, I want to emphasize because this is a simple summation. This is going to preserve all the properties, including law of supply meaning higher price, more quantity supplied, includes factors cause change in supply, right? We just talked about five factors. So those factors are gonna change aggregate supply in the same fashion. Also includes the difference between change in quantity demanded and a change in, sorry, change quantity supplied it and change in supply. Right? One is move the, along the curve. The other is shift the curve. All right? So all the things we discussed regarding to individual supply will apply to aggregate supply. Okay? So this is very important. Because this is going to be a preparation for us when eventually we look at aggregate supply and aggregate demand in macro model. Okay, so this is supply and demand. Now, we are ready to answer the outstanding questions we haven't addressed, which is 
where does the price where does the price come in from? Okay, price. Okay, so just remind you in previous slides. So the price here, they are given. So far, we, what we knew is, okay, so given the price, I know how people are going to respond by supplying different quantity or respond by demand different quantity. Now, we are going to bring the demand and supply together and find out what determines price. Okay. And we are going to rely on the concept of equilibrium. And what happens in equilibrium? So in equilibrium, so these two equal to each other. Quantity supply equal to quantity demand. And this is called market clearing. It happens it won't happen in any price, it only happens at a particular price. Okay, so we call this magic price. But how we end up with this particular magic price, so that is the whole discussion we are going to carry. So essentially, so this is to follow the idea of invisible hand. Okay, so you're going to see there's the invisible hands guide the market move toward this magic price and then so with this magic price we have market clearing but you can ask this question further what is literally exactly is magic invisible hand so actually this invisible hand is just a principle we review in micro so people respond to incentive they exploit this incentive to benefit them. Or in other words, everyone behave on their best interest. Okay, so you just respond to incentive. You behave on your best interest. So this is essentially, this is invisible hand. And the invisible hand leads us to this magic number. This magic number brings us to this equilibrium. So that's a big picture. All right. So now let's see how these things actually play out. All right? So I'm gonna use this diagram to explain to you how the market is going to is going to reach this particular equilibrium. So by the way, when I say equilibrium, it's essentially this point. Right? So this is a particular point. And you think about so this just inside this this plan, right? There's a one particular point. Okay, and then so you may you may curious, you may wondering, so how come we just end up with this particular point? Just mathematically, right? So think about so everything here is possible, but now why we end up with here? Right? Okay, so now let's see so how the magic is played. Okay. So to understand that, just imagine we are live in a competitive market, meaning there are many buyers and many sellers. Okay. To further appreciate the logic we are going to study, let's just imagine we are in a market for lunch, okay? And this is a market for lunch box to simplify, right? So in China, yeah, just replace this with lunch, right? And so just imagine some students in my class are buyers, some other students are sellers. Let's just pretend, okay? Say for example, so we have 100 buyers, potential buyers, and we have 100 potential sellers, all right? And so what we learned so far is, okay, so given the price, okay, and then so we know how the demand side is gonna respond. This is captured by this blue line. Similarly, so given the price, 
how the supply side is going to respond, captured by this red line. So that's all, all we know so far. Okay. Now I just imagine so we are going to walk into the market because the buyers are hungry, looking for a lunchbox. Sellers, so they need cash because they have put their effort. Okay. Uh, now they walk into the market. Nobody knows what's going to be the price. Let's just do a guess and verify. Right? So it's kind of like you draw your lottery. So you don't know what's the, what's the number. If I know the number, so I'm going to buy and there's a, for sure I'm going to win the lottery. Right? Okay, so now here, similar. So we don't know the number. So let's just simplify. Say, for example, so we walk in the market. Everyone was very optimistic. So we believe the economy is so good and everyone's willing to buy. And so we say, okay, the price is two. Now look at the reality. At the price of two, what's going to be supply and what's going to be demand. And so easily we can find out the demand. Okay, let's, let's just round the number. The demand turns out equal to seven, this D. And at price of two, so people was willing to sell because that's a good price. And again, round the number, say for example is 12, that's supply. Now, with this price in your mind, and then people is going to respond, right? How will people respond? From the demand side. So some students feel, okay, so I can skip the lunch because it's too expensive. So that's end up with seven. And from the supply side, okay, so with two, so most of them think, okay, so I should sell my Lunch box because this is a good price, and it was twelve, right? But now, what this means to the market, and particularly what this means to supply side. So twelve is greater than seven. So in economics, this means there's a surplus. Okay, so we have more supply than demand okay this means what this means to supply side it just means there are many sellers they will walk home with MPD pocket they did not or they failed to sell their lunch box right so their profit hasn't been realized they walk home with empty pocket are uh, they we need to do that? No. So they, they come here with the attention to sell their lunch box. Right? And then what they can do as a supply side? What they can do? In order to get rid of their lunch box or in order to cash in their lunch box, the only thing they can do is what? To lower the price, right? So to lower the price so that to induce people to buy more, to get rid of their unsold lunch box, right? So now just imagine if the price went down too far, goes to three quarters. We do the same analysis, right? So now at the 75 cents, the supply and the demand. Now we flip, right? So now the demand becomes to 12 and the supply, this round becomes eight, correct? So now the supply is less than demand. So we have a shortage. What this means, particularly to the demand side? It just means, okay, so there are many students want to get a lunch box, but they couldn't get because there is an enough supply. And then what they can do, the only thing they can do is what? Is to 
raise the price so that attract more supply right so from here what do we learn if price is too high and then there's a force bring down the price if price too low there's a force push off the price okay and until we reach to this point now let's erase everything oh by the way so when the price is too high there's surplus price is too low there's a shortage right if there's a short surplus the supply side we need to reduce the price if there's a shortage the demand side we need to raise the price so until we reach the middle ground now no one has incentive to change their mind why for everyone is hungry who needs a lunchbox they can find a lunchbox at the price at that price on the other hand for everyone who has a lunchbox want to sell so they can find the buyers at that price also they understand if they raise the price for the supply side they will have face a surplus or in other words they cannot sell their lunchbox on the other hand for the demand side if they lower the price and then they are going to face a shortage so they cannot find their lunchbox right so you can see in this particular price so we know in equal deeper no one has incentive to change but just remind yourself how we end up with here right the price too high is pushed down price too low it's going to push up but what's behind this force that push this down and push this down people is respond to incentive so they behave on their best interests so this work like invisible hands just push us toward the middle right this is market equilibrium right okay so this is your theory right but in reality so you may see in the market the price is different at a different store okay to exaggerate or to highlight this particular phenomenon just think of some tourist trap meaning so you go to say so you're gonna go to hawaii go to some beach town right so they sell lots of souvenirs and same souvenir so they can ask for a different price why is that and why this exists it's because the buyers they are constrained by their shopping time they cannot compare well in other words so this force these two force may not work properly given the time limit because remember when i discussed this process so we have enough time so this this underlying things was happening there's enough time for people to respond right but then in reality particularly in the tourist trap so most of the tourists are constrained by the time are you willing to spend half a half a day to reduce the price of this safety of this souvenir by one dollar it doesn't make sense for you right because your time is very precious okay so that explains why in that market so price may differ from store to store but in a well-established market think about electronics okay so iphone has a unified price regardless you buy in store amazon or ebay some seem may argue oh you know what so ebay actually so i can get an iphone for a lower price but remember so there's a risk attached with the iphone you get right so if you factor that risk so you the the effect the price you paid is going to be the same right okay so this is market equilibrium right. oh, by the way so this picture just uh, what i took uh, when i traveling to uh, scotland 
So in Scotland, so they are famous for this wool made uh, scarf. And so the same things uh, in one store ask for two for 25 and then the other store ask for three for 50. You can see the price is quite different. Okay, but again, so people was, was was limited by the amount of time. I was there for like only for two days. All right, just give you an example. Now, yeah, here just summarize what I what I just explained. All right, so if the price is above this matching number, and then so we are going to see supply quantity supplied exceed quantity demanded, and then so we have a surplus. Okay, and then so the supply side will respond. Okay. On the other hand, right here, see, surplus do not last, seller respond, reduce price. So they move goods off the shelves or to cash in their products. Right. On the other hand, if the price is too low and then there is extra demand control to compare to supply, we are going to observe a shortage. But similarly, this shortage won't last. Here, so in the slide, says sellers will increase price. But actually, buyers willing to pay more. Right? Because the buyers willing to pay more. So that gives the sellers the opportunity to increase price, right? So in either case, so we are going to move toward the middle ground, right? Once we are there, nothing will change, okay? All right, so now we are ready to look at one practice questions and then so move to the next slides, use the system, use the model to analyze more complicated change or dynamics. Right. Let's read this for 30 seconds. Okay, so at $5, this question asks you what quantity is supplied and what quantity is demanded. So now we just look at this diagram. $5, so this is quantity supplied, this is quantity demanded. Okay, so obvious, supply is 13, demand is six. And then there's a surplus of seven. Okay, so answer is C. Now, as I just said, so we have understand this model. We understand what it determines where we are. Now we are going to see if there's some force to, to break this equilibrium or to break this static goal, how the economy is going to respond, right? Say for example, if there's an increase in demand, now you may want to remind yourself what can lead to an increase in demand, right? Say for example, so there are many factors, right? So maybe there's a change in test. Maybe there are changes in number of the buyers, changes in your, changes your income, or change in the price or related goods, right? So trying to review that for yourself. Now let's just focus on the slides. If there's an increase in demand, how the economy is going to respond. Okay. So again, so I'm give you
So it says that there are two steps. Step number one. So we originally with P1. So that's the price. At the P1, now with new demand. So actually this is D2. Okay, S1. With new D new demand. What happens to demand and what happens to supply? Which one is bigger? To answer that, we just draw a horizontal line. Okay? And then, then so we look at, so because supply hasn't changed. So supply is here, it's Q1, right? Not demand, demand goes to, let's call it Q2, right? So clearly demand exceed supply. And then, then, so what we have here, we have a shortage, right? Now, due to the existence of shortage, how the market is gonna respond? So people willing to pay higher price, right? Think about for those people who cannot get a product. So they're willing to pay higher price. So and then, so the higher price is going to lead to a change in supply. But remember, here, this is a change in quantity supply, day, not a change in supply, right? Because there's no, any factor cause the supply curve to shift. Hence, we have move along this curve because it's increasing price. And then so we move this to this direction. But I just remind you, so what caused an increase in price is because of the shortage, right? But what causes shortage is because the increase in demand. That's the logic, the logic goes as follows. So the increase in demand cause a shortage. Shortage cause increase in price. Increase in price cause a increase in quantity supply day. But this increase in quantity supply day won't continue forever. It will stop it here. Right? Because once we are here, you can see, so the supply equal to demand. Okay, <clears throat> so let me erase everything. Let the slides play out itself. So we from here to here. Okay, but just make sure you can replay what I just explained. So there are like two steps, right? But the logic is more than two. All right, let's just repeat. So this increase in demand cause a shortage. So here's a shortage. This is a major shortage. Oh, apologize. Shortage here. Let me just start again. So this, so let's draw here and highlight the shortage. So this increase in demand cause a shortage. This one. This shortage cause price increase. This two. And this price increase cause the quantity supply did move up. This is three. And finally, we reach this point. This is four. Okay, one, two, three, four. There are four steps. All right, make sure you understand. And then, to, for you to practice, you may want to do the same things, but for a decrease in demand. Okay, so you should do the same four steps as I just explained. Now, instead of do that for you, so let me ask you, let me just explain to you uh, the change in supply side. What we just learned is like demand side. Right. So now, let's see what happens if there's a decrease in supply. Again, so you want to remind yourself what caused a decrease in supply. Okay, could be an increase in price, could be 
uh, exit of the producers. Right? Okay. So anyway, so there's a decrease in supply. Now, what happened next? As we did before, right? So first, you just find what the supply. So this Q2. So this decrease in supply is going to cause. So this is what. This also a shortage, right? But now this shortage is going to lead a price increase, but it's move along the demand curve. Okay. So we move along this demand curve, why? Because of the demand, there's no factor that causes demand to shift. So the, the price increase, quantity demand will decrease until we reach this point. Okay? So here is just a replay, let's see. Right, a decrease in supply, it leads to a move along the demand curve until we reach this E2. All right? Okay, so now we, what do we learn? Let's just summarize what have we learned. We have learned supply, demand separately. We have learned this equilibrium model. And finally, we use this equilibrium model to understand if there's something caused the supply change or demand change, how the market is gonna respond, All right? So now, Let's just look at a few examples to reinforce what we learned. So in these examples, if this thing becomes popular again, and ask you what would happen, okay? So you may want to picture this demand and supply in your brain, in your mind, okay? But if, uh, for presentation, I will help you with that. So we have a supply, we have a demand. And in this question, essentially the demand shift to right, okay? And then so immediately you can see the equilibrium move from here to here, right? And then the answer is B, okay? So the easiest way is so you know how to draw this diagram. Okay, so like supply and demand. Okay. Now there's other practice questions. So if the cause of wood force, actually, so here I would say, so this is a wood for violin. Now this asks you what happened to equilibrium price and the quantity. So first identify how the fall in price of wood, cause of wood, affects violin. It's going to affect supply or demand. Which side? Supply side or demand side? Why is, why is the demand? So actually it's going to be supply. Right, because wood, as I just mentioned, this is an input for violin, to make violin. Yeah, eventually, it's going to have impact on demand for sure, okay? But immediately, this is going to supply that. So now again, we draw this diagram, that's the easiest way. Supply will increase, right? Because cheaper to make. Now, and then immediately, you can see we move from here to here. So lower price, higher quantity, okay? So pretty straightforward, right? Okay, so now the real complication comes from the case when you have two opposing force determines the equilibrium simultaneously. What that means is, so you have a increase in demand, but there's a decrease in supply at the same time, right? This one example, I mean, in this example, so you can see, so we move from E1 to E2. 
But then, so there's another example. So you can see we move from here E1 to E2. Right? But at the end, at the end, so where we end up with is really depending on which impact stronger. Is it change in demand or change in supply? Right? So I guess I'm, I would like to stop here for this lecture. And then when we meet again, so we will finish this part. All right.